Hey everybody, it's Dave Clark, aka The Powder Guy. We're in a powder shop. We're gonna be here for a little bit. We've got a real big job from a company called Barberton Steel, Barberton, Ohio. They're about 45 minutes from the house here. Um, I like to try to find out what I'm making, what it's for, and that before I go, this is gonna be something for a machine in a steel mill. All right, show you the blueprint real quick. That's gonna be about what it looks like right there. Okay. And what I did, I started laying this out already. You guys seen layouts before. Um, I'm going to start gluing stuff up and uh, get everything ready to start trying to do some stuff tomorrow. Um, it's getting kind of late today. So, um, you know, like I said, I got the layout done. I'll start gluing some stuff up and, and get this pattern going. But we'll show you step by step on this one. It's going to be a big project. It's going to be a long project. We'll probably make a couple videos on it and um, try to keep you up to see every pro uh, every aspect and every process that we do on this job. Like I said, it's gonna be pretty cool. We're gonna glue some rings up, just glue some regular stock up, do some hand planing, and uh, this is gonna be, be a cool job. It's gonna have a lot of little different things, all right? So we'll catch you guys down the road. Okay guys, next day we're still working on this uh, big job for Barberton Steel, okay? So what I did, I started laying out all my segments to get going on the segments. I wanted to try to get this done yesterday to have these things gluing up overnight, but unfortunately I got sidetracked. As usual, that's the one bummer about living it or working out of your house. You get sidetracked really, right? So laid them out as usual okay i showed you this before um you can see how little scrap we're gonna have okay that's one of the reasons we're doing this we want the grain going the same way all the time it doesn't make that much difference on this because it's all going to be sanded all right so we could have end grain and sand it but you know for the other reasons we we just do it this way and, and it's kind of Tradition, we're used to doing it this way too, okay? So let me get cutting these on a bandsaw, and then we'll go over the sander, sand the ends, and start gluing these things together. All right, one of the things I gotta be careful for, you can see I cut these in half. Um, I can't lift an eight foot piece, all right, and then uh, try to cut these out. So I cut them in half. The other thing, when I start gluing these things up, I believe the overall height of it's gonna be, uh, I forget what the overall height it is, but it's going to be higher than the throat and the bandsaw. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do them in two halves, okay? A lot of you guys out there, especially, you know, when you don't have a big sand or big bandsaw, you might have to do it two or three and just try to glue them up real good, you know? So unfortunately, that's the way you're going to have to do it to get started out. You know, once you get some bigger, nicer equipment, you know, makes things a little bit easier. All right, so I'm going to get to cutting these things out. We'll sand them out and show you how we're starting to glue them out. All right, hang tight. Okay guys, got segments part partially done. Okay, this is pretty much gonna be the middle part. It's gonna be all hollow. I gotta do um, two sets of ends to make them, uh, you know, so that we got the ends, okay? So here, um, I'm gonna put the last one on. This is only one half. We got some more uh, segments for the other half, and then we're gonna clamp these up, okay? So basically it's the same thing, guys. You know, 
what we always do, um, and like I said, what I did with these, um, I'll pick you up in a minute, show you. Let me get these on, and then um, I'll show you. We, we did this like brickwork, okay? So these, uh, we're doing them in six pieces, okay? So three and a half. So um, this last, my first row was solid, or three, and then I did half. Uh, full size, full size, half. Okay, and then we went with full size, full size, full size. Okay, back forth, back forth. Okay, so this here, and and when you're doing these too, like I said, this um, uh, the glue doesn't dry right away. You know, it takes a while to harden, good four something hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these last couple pieces on. You know, we try to wring these out as best we can. Okay. And uh, make sure the glue's coming up there. All right. Um, what I'm gonna do is let it sit for about five, six minutes, five, six minutes, five, five ten minutes. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll let it harden a little bit, and then I'll be able to put the clamps on. Okay, with hopefully without stuff moving too much. All right. So we're gonna put this on here, here, and then um, what I'll do is I'm gonna pick you guys up here real quick. I'm gonna show you a little bit how I, I did this. Okay, and like I said, with this, I can I can get on my bandsaw, I can cut this whole uh, piece out. I'm gonna be able to sand it on my sander. You guys probably won't be able to. Um, if you're doing something this big, you have hand tools, you know, you're know, probably not gonna be doing stuff this big for numerous reasons, but it's, uh, you got to know what you can do with your tools, okay? So maybe you might be able to just do two at a time. That might be your sander capacity or your bandsaw capacity, whatever. You know, you're just going to have to do it a little more accurate. The nice, side, or nice thing about, you know, gluing something up this size is that it's, you know, it's going to be out a little bit here or there or whatever. And then I'm just going to sand it all one piece after the glue dries and then we're going to be where we're at, okay? When you, if I had to do these two rows at a time, sand them perfect, set them together, you know, then you, you're going to have to make sure everything's perfect, you know, you pin them, it just takes longer. This, this way it's a little bit shorter, okay? So I'm going to pick you guys up real quick and I'll show you how I did these, all right? Okay, you can see in here. You see how I got a little bit of overlap here too, okay? So what happened was when you could see this piece here, this is the line that um, I had on here to cut for my inside. This actually, this cut here was from when I was doing the outside up, you know, on the other piece here. So instead of going and cutting this to the line, it's going to be inside here. So it, it's no big deal, you know. So instead of making an extra cut, you're wearing your bandsaw down. I got a bunch of scrap wood. This actually would be a little bit stronger. So I just left that inside line. You know, if it, if it was something like way out here, you know, I might change it. But here's here's what I'm saying. You know, I got full piece, full piece. So I got a seam here, seam here. And on this layer down here, I cut it in half. Okay, so... My seam here is right in the middle, okay? And then this seam here is in the middle of a solid piece down here, okay? So that's basically what that is. It's, it's kind of like you're making a brick wall, okay? You know, and, and this, this will make it way stronger. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue up, I'm gonna put the clamps on this. Um, you don't need to see me how to do the clamps. Uh, Put the clamps on these things. I'm going to start gluing up the next one, and then we'll all start getting uh, ready to do the two ends. Okay, so hang tight with me, guys.
Okay, good morning guys. Hey, back to work on the big steel casting pattern. Okay, yesterday we glued a bunch of segments up. They're over there. There's my segments we glued up yesterday. Um, got these done early this morning here. These will be each end of them, okay? So next what we got to do is look at our layout here, okay? And like I tell you guys, I always want you to do the full layout. I did not do the full layout. I will lay this part, the end, out on a different sheet of plywood. I got to get that going. Uh, but next what we're going to do is we're going to do this part right here. It's a little deceiving on this drawing. He's got it short on his drawing, but this is actually 29 and a half inches minus the four, so about 25 and a half inches, okay? So what we're gonna do, and like I said, is here's the layout of it, all right? Here's the outside of it. Here's my center line here. So what we're gonna do is I need a piece from here to here. That's the whole outside, okay? Oops, excuse my fingers there. But what we're gonna do, okay, that is a little over 16 inches there, okay? And see, I'm doing a standard ruler. This is where I gotta be shrink-wise, so I can go ahead and use a standard ruler. So what I wanna do, though, is, let's go over here, I'll show you what I did over here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna notch in here once I start finishing these parts here. Okay, and I'm gonna do that both sides. So from here over to here, actually it's it's 18 inches now, I'm gonna add another half inch on the each side. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make this piece, it's 16 inches, a little bit out here, but in here what we're gonna do is here is a mark right here for my first from here to here is a solid piece of glue up that's what that'll be one of these pieces okay so then once i get in here where my first piece comes in like around here i'm going to bring this down and we're going to cut that notch out okay and we'll do that on each side that way we can attach the glue ups that I did yesterday to this base. Okay, this is gonna be the base of it. All right, I'll show you as we get along. It's a lot of stuff, like I said, it's hard to explain, you know, but I'll show you as we're going along. The reason I'm doing this is, like I said, we probably could go ahead and put this uh, full piece out here and then screw and make this piece from here out separate. However, um, like I said, this foundry, uh, they use cold set sand and they're pretty abusive to their patterns. And what we're gonna do is we'll put some lift rings on each end. So we really need to make this a little bit more rugged. So I wanna have one whole bottom flat piece. All right, and that's the reason why we're doing this. So let me get some stock out for that. I gotta glue some together to get to 19 inches. I'll show you what I gotta do from there. Okay, hang tight guys. Okay guys, ready for the next step here. What I'm gonna do is glue up the base of this right here. Okay, so that's, you can see it better on this part here. So we're gonna glue up this part here. Okay, and like I said, it's a little bit longer than it shows on this drawing. Plus I'm gonna like put it into here so that I can build this other round part right here is it's gonna have something to, to um, grip on to okay so here this is what I'm, I'm ending up with here all right two separate pieces this is about how wide the uh, pieces traditionally come in where I get it from uh, Freeman okay so I'm gonna glue these two pieces together using these clamps and uh, that'll be part of the base and then from there we gotta put the uh, other heap, you know, it's like a big cross. So we're gonna have to build up something for the cross too. So hang on, I'll show you guys how I'm gluing this up. Okay guys, I'm gluing this thing up. Like I said, it's not a big thing. What I started out doing really would have been the easiest way to hop over on my joiner. I could have got a nice straight edge on there, okay? Um, 
as usual, joiners all clustered, there's a bunch of stuff in front of it. Um, I just got a nice straight edge on my sander. A lot of guys definitely won't be having a sander, so you get the biggest hand plane you can out and you go ahead and uh, start planing the sides of these. Okay, and then what you're gonna have to do too, uh, you could do the crayon thing. Also, you know, as, as you're sanding, try to get this as flat and as square as you can, right? All right, and then you could go ahead and, and uh, put crayon on this. And the only thing is, is then you got wax in between too, if you don't get all that crayon off. You're not, but you kind of gotta, you know, fiddle around and, and uh, try to get this joint real nice, okay? And one of these days, I'll show you how to do that. Um, I am gonna get the hand planes out for this. It's just right now, too, you gotta remember this is for a customer, I gotta get it to them so I can't, you know, putz around too, too much on this stuff, right? So we'll, we'll get into some hand planing, too, um, where I'll show you how to get the joints together uh, real good, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp, glue and clamp these together. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set a clamp on each end so that it, it kind of stays in the middle and then we'll put four clamps on. I'll put two in the end, two in the middle. This is a little uh, under 48 inches. I usually like to get a clamp every foot at least, okay? And then what we'll do is, uh, it's getting close to quitting time. Um, what I'll do is I'll put these in the clamps, let them set up overnight. The other thing I'm going to try to do tonight before I get, uh, make a day of it, I'm going to try to glue up my stock for the middle part too, before I get going. All right. So show you how we do this guys. Right, like I said, it's going to take you a while. You learn how much to put glue on here. Um, you can use a brush. You can use a piece of wood, you can use a piece of cardboard to, you know, squeegee this out a little bit. I just put a few beads and like I said, over the years you'll, you learn how much glue to put on. I always put a little bit more on, I like it to squeeze out. Um, it's not furniture, so if it squeezes out, you don't really have to go ahead and uh, scrape it off tomorrow we'll just take a beater chisel and, and scrape the hard glue off okay and what i'm going to do is like i always teach you too okay we're going to bring this together okay so we're going to rub this back and forth and get it somewhat set all right of course the clamps are going to bring this all together all right so i'm going to put this these clamps on the joint all right so that'll keep it the two joints so they're not separating that way all right okay now two okay i like i said i've been collecting clamps and stuff over the years uh, lucky i got this nice clamp fit in there so now i'm i'm all good here okay if, if you don't you could take a couple pieces of wood and sandwich it also too okay um, a lot of times if i do that go in the kitchen grab some wax paper stick on there so the wood doesn't stick on there if the wood sticks on there, you know, take a chisel, hack it off and sand it, you know, no big deal. Okay, so there's different different ways you can do different things. Okay, so I got that one done. I'll show you how to I showed you how to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and glue up the other one. Um, if I get a chance, I'll show you how I'm gonna glue up those center pieces and we'll go from there. All right, hang tight guys. Okay guys, one thing I forgot to tell you, it's real important too. Um, what we gotta do here, okay, and this isn't being a craftsman selecting your wood and everything, all right? So we have to, both edges of this, we have to put a profile on, okay? So you see this knot here? This is actually gonna be in that round spot, so that's not a big deal, but we're pretty clear from here up. And then same thing here, um, you know, we're pretty, I'm hoping this will be in that round spot too. Okay, and then the same thing when I did the other one, where I try to keep all these knots, you know, in the inside where they're not going to make any big deal, okay? So, with that being said, that's not only in powder making, that's if you're making a tabletop, you know, a door, anything, you know, you got to learn how to, uh, you know, glue up your lumber, what side to do, what side to, you know, keep up, what side to keep down. 
uh, what you, you know to use your edge, all that, and, and that, it comes over time, all right. So that's basically uh, one of the things when I before I started gluing these pieces of wood up, you know, it's you got to look at it, see which, uh, you know, if I would have glued this thing up here and then had this as the outside edge, and then I'm going to be hand playing in this, so I'd have been hitting those knots, okay, and I don't want to do that, so that's why. You know, we ended up having this nice, you know, clear spot here. All right. So with that, like I said, um, it's kind of getting late in the day here. What I'll probably end up doing is uh, I might just glue those uh, center pieces up and then uh, we'll continue on with you guys in the morning. All right. I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, guys, same day real quick. Just want to show you one thing. Like I said, never have enough clamps. So if you see a clamp out there, pick it up. Okay guys, um, got all the stock glued up, I think for the pattern at least. I'm gonna leave the core box till a uh, later date. So what I usually do, and especially here, um, I gotta do things differently in this shop because it's so small, I've got limited uh, you know ranges with my band saw sander and that so what i do what i like to do i like to glue everything up first and then i like to start just jamming and uh getting going a lot of times it's uh hey sometimes i'll do a build as i go right but this this particular one i'm doing uh i just glued everything up for the pattern uh now i'm gonna already start cutting things out okay so one of the things like i said is here's the end view here okay so i laid this out a little bit here all right so this represents the bottom piece that i glued up right here all right i glued up two of those all right so that represents that piece there then from here to here are the two pieces i got on top okay so my next thing what i'm going to do is i got a flat bottom and i got one square edge here so what I'm going to do is, I know the distance from here to here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that on those. And then um, from there, what we're going to do, see, I'll be from here to here. So I know I'm, I'm where I got to be, okay? And then from here to here, I know I'm there, all right? First thing, too, I got to put center lines over everything, too, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'll get from here to here, I'll get my height where I got to be, then I'll get a center line all around these two pieces then what i'll do is i'll measure from here to here from here to here and then i'm going to put a two degree angle that's what the uh, foundry wants there okay and then this particular part right here i don't have any machinery here to do so you know just like you guys more than likely you're not going to have machinery so guess what we're going to do we're going to get the hand planes out okay so we'll get the hand planes out and i'll show you how, how to hand plane that and then basically this same configuration is 180 degrees actually every 90. so once we get both halves done we'll do the same thing to these uh two flat parts on the parting too okay but for now i'm just going to get started i'm going to do one half at a time also um, I'm going to make both pieces, but I'm just going to build one half at a time. And then once we're done with the first, then we'll build the second or the, the second half on top of the one that we did. Okay. So I'm going to square those blocks up and then, um, get some angles on them and then we'll show you how to hand plane this radius on here. Okay. Hang tight guys. Okay guys, got this, uh, squared up, got these two blocks squared up, got them, they're the same height. Okay, wow, look at that. Perfect there. Comes over experience. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do here, I wanna get a center. So we're gonna measure how wide these are. And uh, we're gonna try to get these. The thing is, uh, you gotta watch too where you glue things up because 
you know, it sucks to have your center on your glue up joint, you know, because it, it kind of gets confusing, you know. So, unfortunately, that's where we're at here. So, I'm going to take my thumb gauge. Okay, so I'm at the height I need, right? I'm going to take my thumb gauge and then I'm going to go all the way around both of these and get my center. Always have your center lines on everything, right? That's the way we do everything. Make sure you flip it the right way. We're going to put, put this on the center on the bottom too. More than likely we won't need the center. Uh, we might do because what I'm going to have to do, this isn't to length yet. All right, I just squared up the ends, did a rough length. We're over. Um, I'm not sure where I want to cut it for draft yet on the end. Okay. Other important thing. I got one square side on this. Okay. So that's, uh, make sure you go, you measure from the same side. Right. Okay. And then where you, um, Make sure you remember where you have your straight side for your marking gauge, okay? Because that, that can determine a couple different things too, all right? So make sure you mark that out also. Okay, that's a pretty crappy line there. All right, so next what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my layout. All right, I got my top like I showed you where that radius is. Okay, the only thing is, is I got to take this from the top of the, not down by the radius, I'm, I'm higher up. So I got to take the, the measurement from there, right? So I'm just going to do a quick one-sided little that. I'm going to extend, I'll, I'll bring it over to you and show you up close, okay? Okay, so... We, we have to be here eventually, but for right now we're here, and this is on a two degree angle. So what I'm gonna do, this is exactly three inches from here to here. So technically this is gonna be a little shorter. So I've got my mark up here, so I'm gonna measure from here to here. It's gotta be both say, say the same side. Okay, so that way I'm, I get my three inches where, where the radius comes down, all right? Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put these lines on here. Then next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to the bandsaw, put two degrees on these sides, I'll sand it, and then I'll uh, get back with you guys, show you how we're gonna put the radius on, all right? So, hang tight a sec. So the parting line's underneath this board, okay? And that's where that's going to go on top of, okay? Hang tight, I'll get set up for that. Okay, guys, this is going to get a little ungainly because singer show big here, okay? So I got a block. I put a center line on it. It's parallel. All right, so what I'm going to do is, um, like I said, I need an inch and seven-eighths line on there. So instead of, like, trusting myself, I'm just going to go ahead and write off this parting line here, right? would be the easiest way best way that way there's no mistake 
and uh, you know we should be where we're at here right and now put a couple arrows okay that's where I'm at it's my parting line okay now these are gonna be tall I know I'm short too so that's not gonna be fun so what I gotta do is I gotta put these on here line this up and then strike a line so we'll, we'll give her a clamp here somewhere around there uh, see if there's an easier way to do this here we go all right see if we can do it this way there we go I don't have to be so tall that way right line my center line up put these on the back side so that we can get the uh, dividers on there right and then what I'm gonna do and this is very important I'm gonna do this on both ends I need a reference point on both ends okay and I need to do it you know start off because it's uh, once I get started it's gonna be too late okay so I'll just line up my center and then put an arc and actually a quick little check my radius should be at the top of my piece which it is okay so we're there bingo okay we're in business there okay so I'm gonna do this to all three the rest of the three sides here and uh, I don't know if you can notice also okay this guy uh, where it's just going, like I said, it's going to an iron foundry or steel foundry. They do steel. They do a little iron too, but it's a big foundry and they do tonnage. Um, they use rough, rougher sand. It's rougher on the pattern. So we got to build these as, as uh, rugged as we can, like I said. However, for me too, I got to watch. You now for them, they got cranes everywhere I don't so if you can see I hollowed this out a little bit so two twofold it's gonna make it lighter for me plus we're saving a little bit of, of lumber that way too okay but I still just gotta make sure I get about I go two and three quarter to three inches thick of uh, um, wood make sure I got two to three inches of wood you know left with these guys here so there's plenty there um, with these round uh, glue ups here that one's gonna be a little close um, and the reason they're gonna be close is because part of it is the lumber that I get from Freeman uh, the pine boards that I get from Freeman uh, they come they're a little bit under 12 inches wide so they're roughly always 12 inches wide but they're a little under so for me to get three segments out of it I had to go a little under three forget what they ended up at uh, measure it right there yeah they're about three inches so you know that 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 could you know vary too right when you do that kind of stuff but what I'm going to do with that particular one, since we're using um, this inch and seven eighths uh, piece there on both sides as a, uh, a base, what I'll probably do is just put a like three quarter inch piece of plywood rib in there just, just for a little bit of added strength. I mean, it, it'll help, it's not gonna be the best, but it, it'll help a little bit. Um, like I said, physics, you know, it's, Believe it or not, there's a little physics in this too. And you know, that roundness, you know, that's that's gonna be a huge, uh, um, you know, like trying to crack an egg or like bust an egg in that. So, you know, same thing. The roundness is gonna actually uh, be a little bit more tough there than just like a flat piece. So, but like I said, I'll probably just go ahead and throw a piece of three quarter inch plywood in there. Okay, there you go. Okay, let me set this up, guys, and um, I'll show you how to get a shape on the top, all right? Hang tight. Okay, guys, I'm over here. Um, I got my radius side here. What I did was I cheated a little bit because I got the sander, so I made a mark 
from the top down where the radius ends, okay? On both sides, I ended up sanding it a little bit. That way it makes it a little easier for me because like I said too, don't forget, I gotta get this done for my customers. So, you know, I love teaching you guys too. So I gotta take some shortcuts while I'm doing this stuff here. So I'm gonna try to teach you as much like hand stuff as I can, all right? But you know, so the proper way, the best way to do this, um, I got this on my bench here, the bench that I use um, on a bigger bench. I do have a vise at the end with a stop on it. Jam that on there, put a uh, clamp with the block at the end. I just put a couple blocks with clamps. All right, technically I should use my joiner, the biggest one, you wanna use the biggest plane you can. Right now, I'm not sure where my joiner is in the state of uh, being sharp and all that stuff. I know this one, I just used it a little bit ago. It's beautifully sharp, so I'm gonna use it. And then what I'm gonna do is, you take as long as strokes as you can, okay, and you, you try to keep everything even, okay? That's that's one of the things when you hand plane, you want to try to keep everything, you know, all one stroke. You, you see guys, you'll see me do it too, taking little, little nibby strokes. That's more for if there's like a high spot, you get this, okay? But this we already know is all straight and flat, okay, because it was on the sander. So, you know, we got... A nice straight flat surface to go on so I'm going to take cuts all the way along the only way you're going to be able to do cuts like this have a nice sharp uh, hand plane okay <coughs> so you watch both ends and uh, you know you just keep on going until you hit it hit a uh, you hit your radius marks on each end keep an eye on both ends too um, you know doing this um, so long I'm gonna try to take this as close as I can like I said I got to get this done also <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I got something going on in there um, I got to get this done like I said too okay so I'm, I'm getting close here so I'm gonna start going up a little bit more okay I'm gonna start a new cut all right and like I said, this was easier for me because I, I was able to start it on the sander, okay? But I'll get this as close to my uh, radius as I can, all right? Okay, I'm gonna, I can see it starting to get up. Okay, so I got the center line on here now too. You don't wanna make that disappear. So make sure you don't go too far up. Okay, so I got this one side pretty good. I'm gonna get my other side. This could be a little bit more difficult. There are a couple knots here, but you know, you just want to keep those strokes going long and as flat as you can. And then once you get, see, you can see here, see how that's pretty much, that's where I started, right? And it's pretty close to the same thickness as where I finished. All right, get that together. I mean, that, that that's like pretty close on there. So that's what you're looking for when you get these chips off here, okay? When you're trying to do something straight and flat, all right? You want that to be, and like I said, the, the more you go, you know, this flat spot's getting wider, 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 so it's easier to control the, the hand plane, okay? So a couple more. And I think we'll be in business on that one. Watch on here a little bit more. Okay guys, lost lost for a minute, battery went dead. So anyhow, we'll uh, see if Joe can edit this good here. Continuing on planning these, okay? So like I said, you wanna take long, straight strokes. Keep that as even as you can. And I think we're, I cut off before I was trying to tell you the key to this and the key to make this enjoyable is to have your sharp tools okay you know you got to have sharp stuff otherwise you're not gonna you're not gonna get these uh, you know that's what you want you know when you when you're playing and okay you want to be nice and even okay um, one of these days I'll show you the best I can uh, we'll, we'll tune up one of the hand planes okay We'll do a little lesson. There are guys, I swear, 
like I said, I'm, <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. You know, I toot my own horn all the time, of like how good I am and all kinds of stuff. But seriously, there are guys that just, they, they use their hand tools way more than I do. Um, you know, we get guys that'll just make furniture strictly with hand tools. Those guys just, they live, breathe, and sleep just, you know, tuning planes up, you know, sharpening, you know, chisels things like that i mean i can do it i'll show you best as i can but seriously there are guys that are way way better than it than i am okay so um you know there are just certain thir certain things where you know it, there are definitely guys they, they research this they know all the metallurgy to the uh tool bits you know uh chisels and the irons and that so but i mean that's the key you know to keep keep the stuff sharp and and i tell you it's uh it's way better of a, a pleasure to um you know work on nice sharp equipment than just to have a you know you're struggling and, and it's, it's just not fun you know and it's it's more like work than you know like right now i'm not struggling whatsoever doing this i mean this is coming off really nice um, you know, and it's like I said too, you know, one of the biggest things you got to do is, uh, you know, when you're doing this stuff, make sure you got as little knots as you can, because, you know, that's another thing. If you got knots in there, you know, that, that, that can become an issue too, okay? So the next thing, I'm, I'm getting close to my mark here. Um, actually, no, I'm not that close here. I can see here. Like I said, I'm more used to doing this stuff, so I can, yeah, that's the thing you'll see with the uh, pattern maker studer. I was, I was feeling things. That's, that's one thing, get, get into these things or your, your sixth sense right here for pattern makers, right? So same thing guys, you know, get your radius in here, All right? Just keep on, keep on working it, okay? And, uh, you know you'll get down there but the thing is you got to keep make sure i want to keep my center line up here and i got my two lines down here i want to keep don't clean those okay because that's uh you know there's red marks right there but i want to touch them because i don't want to go past it so it's where i got to be with those okay so definitely don't get those okay now here's another situation i'm running into right now okay so this planed up pretty good. Um, this fourth board in here, I got the green going the other way. This is where you get ambidextrous. Okay, I could take this turn around, but you know, learn, learn how to do things left-handed. Oops, what happened there? A big chunk just came out there. It's a knot. Okay, but just, you know, te teach yourself how to be ambidextrous a little bit too. All right, that way you don't have to, uh, you know, change your body position okay what I'm gonna do now like I said what I always do is uh, I kind of cheat a little bit okay I like I use rough sandpaper just cut stuff way quicker get stuff done quicker and then what I do I end up uh, just using the um, what do you call it the sandable primer fills in a lot of stuff okay so normally like we say we always go with the grain with stuff okay so i was going with the grain when we were hand planting this however okay so i could be going a little bit wavy all right so what i want to do for this step i want to go opposite what i was cutting with the plane that way if if i did there are little humps you know, hopefully we'll be a little bit more apt to take them out with the, you know, nice rough piece of sandpaper. You know, and, and like I say, I always, always use a block, okay? And um, another thing you could do too, actually, you could cut a wider block out like this with the radius and, and glue some sandpaper in there too. I've done that, but this is, I, I'm not doing enough. Uh, as if I'm doing a real big job, this one's not that big, so. So we'll just use this and, and you can see you guys won't be able to see this on camera but i can see where there's you know sandpaper's hitting where it's not so it's uh that's why we're doing it this way what i'll do too is once we get 
we'll do this and, and then we'll sand the other way to get it going a little bit. But you want to get all the lumps out. All right, guys, here, I'll show you this one that I did. It's a little bit more to do on that one. So there's this one. Radius is perfect on there, right? So we got these two, one for each side. So next step, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean up this mess. I'm gonna lay this bottom board out. I'm gonna put a uh, center line all the way around it. We're gonna figure out where we're gonna mount this on there. And then what we're gonna do is start uh, laying these out, start getting around part two. Um, one of the things I might do too, there's three quarter inch radius on these. Uh, usually what I like to do is I, I like to leave all my corners square. Um, that way we, when you finish, you can check stuff. And I was thinking, I, I might not, I really don't need to check things up here. So I might just go ahead and, and put my three quarter inch rays. I'm, I'm not sure, I might, I might not. Cause what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a piece coming into here. It's gonna be hard to get into. You know, this way I could just go ahead and We'll make the decision. We'll make the executive decision. All right, hang tight guys. We'll uh, get some cleaned up a little bit, show you some more.